Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. Today we are doing one of my paint by number kits that I have um, released. Uh, if you have purchased it and you are painting along, thank you for purchasing it and I'm glad that you are here to follow along. If you haven't, you can check out all of my paint by number kits. Um, I'll have videos of them here on my YouTube channel, um, but you can also see them on my website. I have various designs um, trying to get to all ages and uh, quite a few interests here. So these paint by number kits, as you can see, and if you purchased one, they are on wood canvases. I have burned the lines in, in preparation, and they are ready to be painted in. Inside of your kit, you will have received two paint brushes. This is one of them, and this is the one I'll be using today, but you also have received a finer detail one that you can use for getting into some of the small spaces if you don't want to use this larger, larger brush. You will have also received paints ready to go in their tubes or canisters, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm just going to be using right out of the tube today. I've got a few leftovers in these canisters and you will also have received a little hanging mechanism there that you can attach to the back if you plan to put this onto the wall. And if not, that's fine, but I thought I'd provide that for you. You will also have received a color guide and the color guide, yours is going to be a bit bigger than this. This one was just a prototype that I made. Um, we'll have the uh, numbers that correspond with the paint canisters and it has some tips and instructions on the back that you can follow. But you probably are, probably already seen this if you are watching this video. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to um, create these videos of me doing these paint by number kits. So if you were interested in following along with me, then you would be able to. So if you have a place where you can um, just have your paint canister set, you know, work at a table or something, that's probably best. You, you won't be needing to do any mixing, so you don't need a paint palette here. I just have mine here because it's that's always where I work from. Um, but one thing you might need is like an old rag or a paper towel or something where you can dry off your brush after you're using it. And maybe a cup, a plastic cup with water. Um, I use old mason jars. You can see this, <laughs> this water is pretty dirty. Um, but uh, that's usually what I use to hold my water there. So I'm just going to open that up to the side over here. All right, so if you've never painted before, this is acrylic paint. Um, it dries pretty quickly, so if you're done using a color, make sure you snap those lids back shut tight and just to keep them from drying out. Um, and in between layers, because we might have to do some layers on here, uh, you'll notice that the layers will dry fairly quickly, which is quite nice. So we're just going to start with number one, and your color number one should be this darker blue of the two blues that we have. So I'm going to open mine up here. And I've had this paint in this canister for a couple of weeks now, if not more, and it's still, it's not even close to being dried out. So I just got a whole bunch on my paintbrush there, as you can see, and I'm just going to start with some nice, long, horizontal brush strokes. Don't be afraid if you go over the edge a little bit, that's just fine. All right, I'm going to fast forward a little bit this video at this point um, to where there might be something that I need to say to you. Thank you. 
All right, so one layer is finished there. And um, as you can see, part of it's already starting to dry. Um, acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. Um, but you're probably going to need two layers of this blue here. Um, you can probably still see some of the wood through it on yours. I know I can see some of the wood still on mine. And so just by adding a second layer, that's going to make it that nice opaque color that won't have anything coming through it. As you get close to these lines here, I like to do nice just horizontal strokes just to kind of go along the line. Um, I went a little bit into the line there, um, but that's that's okay. I can go over that with a little bit of, um, if you just grab it like a pen or something afterwards with a really fine tip or a needle, then it just scrapes the paint right out and there's, there's no problem there. And as you noticed, I probably um, did that pretty early. I turned the canvas sideways so I could, just because it was more comfortable for me that way. Um, so if you want to turn the canvas upside down, whichever way is more comfortable for you and easier for you to um, to do the brush strokes, feel free to do that. All right, so I'm going to quickly do a second layer here, and I will fast forward through that and allow you to work through that. There's the second layer of that blue done on that. On the camera, it still looks a little bit wet, obviously, but that color is much more opaque. Now you can't really see through it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my rags here. As you can see, it's covered in other paint. I'm gonna wipe some of that excess paint off first. And then I'm going to wash that off in my little mason jar here. and dry it off with my other cloth here, as you can see. Try to get that as dry as you can by wiping it off there. The drier it is and the better um, it'll, it won't water down the, the next color that you're gonna be working on. All right, so make sure that blue is sealed nice and tight. Now you can get the second one, number two. It'll have a nice number two on top and that will be the lighter blue. So I've got mine here. And we're gonna do the lighter blue for the rest of the sky. So all across that midsection here. So I'm gonna take my canvas here and turn it sideways. And then as I work along the different edges of those um, green elevators, then I'll probably keep it this way. But then as I'm working along the horizon line, and since I'm right-handed, I'll be turning it that way to go through there. All right, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here, do a little time lapse while I paint through this. All right, there's two layers done on, of the light blue as well. So again, I'm going to take off that excess paint, give that brush a nice rinse. And dry it off here. If you're enjoying this video and enjoying your paint by number kit, I'd appreciate if you left a like on this video and if you haven't already then subscribe as well to my channel so you don't miss other videos of other paintings or product reviews or paint by number kits or anything like that i've got a whole wide variety of stuff here on my channel all right so we got our sky done um you can go to either of the grain elevators next i think we'll go to the larger one that we'll do the turquoise first and then um, move over to the red one after so you'll have a little paint canister with a number three on it. I'm just going to put a little bit down here on my palette. You can see there. 
and again with this one I like to kind of move my canvas with the shape of the line that I'm going up against so you'll see I'll kind of turn it in a 360 here as I go along just following along that that line I probably put way too much turquoise out but that's okay I'm gonna need to use a little bit later um, as well here so if you're interested in my other designs of these paint by number kits um, I've got quite a few different ones you can check them out at my website www.brianslowenartist.com And while you're at it, feel free to follow me on Facebook or Instagram as well, where you see you can see photo updates of different projects I'm working on, different paintings that um, have sold. I paint, I post a lot of my progress shots on Facebook and Instagram that really aren't seen on my website or anywhere else. Um, so if you are interested in following along with those. Um, follow me there. From time to time I also do giveaways um, of different prints or greeting cards. Um, sometimes I've done giveaways of mini original paintings as well. So check me out at Brian Sloan Art or Brian Sloan Artist. Instagram is Brian Sloan Art. Facebook is Brian Sloan Artist. All right, there's one layer done. Um, as you noticed when you were maybe doing the light blue all the way across, by the time you got all the way across, the other, the front part, or the part that you did first, sorry, was already dry. And that will most likely be the cause when you're doing larger areas with acrylic paint. But with a smaller area like this, you most often need to just leave it for a second in order for it to dry. Um, before going on and doing the second coat. The reason that we want to let it dry first is if you go right back in while it's still wet, then a lot of times it just um, kind of picks up the wet paint that's on the um, canvas already. And it almost, yeah, you're almost picking up more paint than you're putting down in the end. And so try to let it dry a little bit if you can first. In the meantime, your number four color is actually a pre-mixed by me because I couldn't find a color in a tube that I liked for it and so it's going to be this bright aqua green that we're using that turquoise color for the front of the um, green elevator mixed with a little bit of Payne's gray to create just a darker um, a little bit darker shade of this turquoise for the the shadow side of this green elevator so while I'm waiting for that to dry there I'm just going to mix a little bit of this here to the side so I'll open up some of this Payne's gray and we're not going to need much it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful um, color and I've got a little palette knife here that I'm going to use for mixing it still has some <laughs> paint on it from a previous painting that I just finished up so I'm going to take some of that up here and we'll see what that gives us. So I don't know how well you can see on the video, but it definitely is just a nice darker, darker shade there. All right, I'm gonna go in and do the second layer here of this lighter turquoise on the front. Out of all the paint by number kits, this darker turquoise that we'll be using here was one of the few that I had to mix myself in those little paint canisters. So if it looks a little bit messier, that's why, because it's not just poured right in from a a premixed a premixed paint. It's one that I mix specifically for this painting. So I'm 
And I've really grown to, well not grown to love, I really just love this turquoise color. I use it in a lot of different paintings that I do, well especially the wood paintings when I'm painting different turquoise lakes. It's one of my one of my favorite colors to use for those lakes. All right, so there's the second layer of that on there. I'm gonna get just a little more of this light color to mix in there. And for this one, since we're using like the same, just a darker tone of this, of one color, if you just wipe the excess paint off of that brush, um, you don't really need to rinse it off in between those colors. So like in between the reds and in between the yellows, I usually don't bother going through and wiping off the whole thing. I can tell you I'm gonna need a little bit more already. So bring in some more of this. But don't worry, yours will be yours will be pre-mixed to perfection already, so you don't need to worry about that for yours. I'm filming this before anything's released, and so that's why I don't have anything pre-mixed yet. I wanted to get all these videos up before I release them, so they're, they're good to go for you to follow along, like you are right now. All right, so continue going up here. my story about painting a little bit if you're curious or if you don't know some of you may know already I started painting back in 2014 um, when I was in university and I wasn't going to school for art or anything art related um, but where I was going to school um, up in Edmonton it gets dark really fast in the winter time the evenings and nights are very very long so i needed i wanted something i could do inside um as a hobby um that wasn't just just gaming all the time or anything like that not that i'm against gaming I, from time to time i don't mind playing but I, I needed something something more so i don't know what it was but i just and I really wish I could remember, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I saw a video or a post or something, and it was of somebody, maybe it was of somebody painting, I don't know. Anyways, I went to Michael's and got the cheapest canvas, canvas boards, there were canvas boards, little 5 by 7 the cheapest little Artist Loft paint set, a variety set of tubes, and the cheapest set of paint brushes. I think I spent under $20. And I was like, okay. Even though, yes, I was a poor student, I was like, okay, I can afford $20 to just try something out. So I went home that night and tried it out. Followed, found a, an easy tutorial on YouTube to follow of acrylic painting and painted it. And afterwards, I was like, you know what? That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I like this. So I did a few more easy tutorials. The results varied. I still have some of those first originals that I did, actually. And um, even though they weren't anything special, I still enjoyed the process of creating. And um, after a few, I was like, um, I was pretty hooked, and I remember um, I was hooked to the point where, you know, I within a few weeks, I went back and got some more expensive paints, some more expensive brushes. Um, I bought a little, um, I ended up getting like an easel and um, a little stool and stuff like that and just uh, 
and went from there. And um, I painted, you know, just very, very much as a hobby for a year or two. And then, you know, I was thinking to myself, oh, why don't I try to, to sell some paintings? And I listed um, some stuff on Etsy and nothing happened for, for quite a while. And then one day one of my paintings sold and it was to somebody in Switzerland. <laughs> I, uh, at the time, I couldn't believe it. It was a little, it was a 12 by 24 painting. So one foot, one foot by two feet. So nothing huge, but it wasn't, it wasn't tiny either. It was a good size and sold it for a hundred bucks to someone in Switzerland. And I was thrilled, you know, cause I'd spent a decent amount of money on supplies and canvases and all that kind of stuff. But to actually see a little bit of return from some of that was pretty cool. And and to have my first sale be international, which was pretty crazy to me as well. All right, so sorry, I'm gonna interrupt here. We are done. I did two layers of that darker one. Um, your number five color will be a nice gray. That will be for the, for the roofs there. I am going to wash off the brush now because I don't want, well, if a little bit of turquoise got into that gray, it wouldn't be a big deal. And we'll move into that gray there. Anyways, yeah, I sold the first painting in 2016. So it was two years, roughly two years after I started painting and just kept on going and never, never have stopped it just it becomes it is a lifestyle now you know I, now having a kid and everything I don't have a lot of time um, I get you know maybe having an hour an hour and a half a day to yourself once they're in bed and you have some time to your to relax so between um, spending time with <laughs> my wife and sometimes to doing extra work stuff because I'm a school teacher and trying to balance doing my own hobby time I I don't get much time in a day to paint but I do do enjoy um, every minute of it I really do and I feel privileged and blessed to have found something that that I enjoy doing and that I know has brought um, happiness to other people's lives as well. Um, I've been able to do some pretty cool commissions over over the years and hope to be able to continue to do more. All right, this first green elevator is really coming into, into view here. That gray is gonna need a minute to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and go to color eight, actually. You don't have to, you can you can go in order, but just some some of that brown here, that burnt umber, it's actually called. Because if I end up mixing just a little bit of gray with that burnt umber, it's not going to make a big deal. And I'm just going to do the roof of this other one here, because I know that this is going to need definitely two coats. Burnt umber isn't always the most opaque color to begin with and so it, it, it needs two coats. A lot of times when people hear I'm an artist or people who know me know that I'm an artist they ask if I painted or drew a lot as a kid and I will be 100% honest and you can ask anybody I know that or yeah anybody that knows me well and knew me as a kid is no I never did anything 
um, like this. I never took art class in school outside of elementary school where it was mandatory. Um, it was just never my thing. I didn't, I didn't um, have a really have a desire. I was always fascinated by people who could create art, but it was never something I thought that I would be able to do. So a lot of times when I do workshops and things like that, and people tell me that they're not artistic, and I just usually tell them, yeah, neither was I until I tried once. And in my mind, you know, it's something that I've practiced. You know, a lot of times on a daily basis for the last, like, seven years, probably this week that I'm filming this. I'm filming this in October of 2021. <laughs> and it was, it was the beginning of October in uh, 2014 that I started. And so it's not something that you know came to me overnight i discover new things discover new technique techniques as i as i go along and so i don't want people to think that they're not artistic because they can always always try Again, if you have any questions for me while you're painting or just anything, just shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to, to respond. All right, so the two roofs are done. Let's jump into the colors. I'm gonna start with the darker one, um, which is your number seven. So it is a cadmium red deep, but this will be in your number seven canister. And as you can see on your little guide, their seven's gonna be those three, those three squares. Um, that brown won't really affect this red that much, so I'm not too worried about washing my brush off. I just wiped off, as you could see, that a little excess of paint that I had, but it'll be fine other than that. If you're interested, I do make custom paintings for people, whether they be on canvas or on wood in the unique mixed media style that I do. I've done commission paintings for people across the US, in Canada, and overseas as well. And I'm more than happy to work with you step by step as we go through and create something that'll fit in your home or wherever you would want to hang a painting. This red is a nice, rich tone to it. It's quite, quite nice. It might still take two layers of it, but that's okay. In the comments below, if you would like, I'd love to hear where you're from and how you're enjoying this paint by number kits. If there's any suggestions of um, scenes that you would like as a paint by number kit or objects or places or I don't know anything. because so I've done um, a few different um, things. So I'm always open to suggestions of what people would like. So you feel free to leave those in the comments or share with me where you're from. I like to 
like to hear where my artwork has been too. It's always it's always fun to think about and kind of crazy to think that something that I've put together or something that I've made is, you know, somewhere around the world. All right, there's the one first layer done, so I'm just going to go back and add in this second layer. Hope you don't mind me just chatting along as we're we're working through this painting. If you want to mute me, you can go ahead. But I thought it'd be kind of fun for you to get to know me a little bit more as the artist and the creator of this and kind of paint along with me here. If you have any suggestions for these videos, also feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message. I'm a pretty easy going, easy going guy as you can probably tell. My students always tell me I'm, I'm the most relaxed teacher they've ever had, <laughs> or the most chill, they say. It's just always been my my personality. Alright, one more little square here. And you can see I whip this thing around and get the angle that I like best these geometric paintings here. All right, there's that darker red. Again, since we're just gonna be going to a lighter red, I'm just wiping off that excess paint. And we'll be using a, what is this one? Pyro bread? Bread, <laughs> red. I don't know if that's how you say it. P-Y-R-R-O-L-E. It's almost got a little bit of an orange tinge to it to kind of brighten it up a little bit. But that'll be nice and bright for the front of this uh, grain elevator. Then after this red, we'll just have the yellows left up front. Definitely put too much of this red out. You'll probably have leftover paint in your canisters, but I wanted to make sure you had enough, so better to have too much than to run out. All right, I'm just gonna, well, yeah. You could leave that for a minute, let that dry on there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a second layer along part of it there, and you can really see it's already brightening it up a bit more. The other thing about painting on wood is wood will in my experience, this isn't this this isn't 100% uh, fact. I'm just saying, in my experience, I've noticed that wood soaks up the painting a bit faster than canvas does, and so that paint will dry. In my experience, it dries faster on wood than on canvas, but that may not always be the case. So don't don't go spreading that around too far. All right, wipe off that excess. Dry that brush off. Or sorry, not dry. <laughs> Wash it off. Get that red out of there. And now 
I'm drying it off here. All right, so we got the two, two colors, two yellows. Um, we want the darker yellow to be for those two and the lighter yellow to be for the front. So I'm going to grab the dark yellow here, put some of that out. That's probably, again, way too much. I don't know why I let that much squeeze out. But we do have a little bit more space to cover, thankfully. So let's get in here. You'll notice that the yellow is very transparent. Definitely not an opaque color. Um, so that texture of the wood is probably going to come through here, even after two layers. Um, but that is taken into consideration with the design of this painting. Since it is supposed to be more like fields, that little bit of grain of the wood showing through just adds a little bit of texture to the, to the bottom of this painting, and I, I kind of like that. If you're watching this video, I appreciate you being here and following along with me. Making these videos does take a decent amount of time <laughs> and effort, and I'm always appreciative when people watch and follow along with these things. It's just my hope that you're finding a little bit of joy from creating here as well. All right, there's the first layer of this one, but we also use this dark yellow down here. So let's grab a bit more on that brush. Got a little, there we go. A piece of dust on there. And since we're doing a larger space here, I think that after we're done this bottom part, that that part will be dry enough that we can go back and add our second layer directly, and we won't have to wait at all in between those layers drying. If you're wondering, you probably have noticed already though, that if you've looked at my my paintings on my website, that I get most of my inspiration from things around me, whether that be nature or in terms of grain elevator, um, thing, just things that are close to me. Um, I do a lot of wildlife and landscape scenes of animals such as bears and deer and landscape scenes from Banff and Waterton and um, the Rocky Mountains that are near to me here in Alberta. Never I've never gotten into painting people, portraits. It's something I've kind of <laughs> stayed away from because it intimidates me a little bit, but also because I just don't really have the, the desire to. Um, something that I find with painting for me, I need to enjoy the subject that I'm painting and what I'm creating, or then it just seems like a job to me chore more like it I guess and since this is still just a hobby for me this isn't a full-time job at all I want this to be you know my painting time is something that I want to enjoy doing I don't want it to feel like okay I have to go do this like no I, I get to go do this and so some people have approached me and asked me to do certain you know like portraits or 
um, even like still life or things like that, that I'm not the biggest fan of. So um, I don't usually take those commissions because I want this time to be um, to be spent on stuff that I'm passionate about. All right, there's two layers of that darker yellow. If you want to add a third, feel free to. All right, now we have this brighter yellow. I just wiped off the brush. I didn't, I didn't wash it off. And this color on yours will be in the number 10 canister. This is a nice primary yellow. I do or can offer drop shipping of these paint by number kits. And what I mean by that is if you would like to order someone for somebody else, I can ship it right to their address instead of having to go through you. So maybe if you have um, a friend, sibling, a parent, grandchild, any of those things somewhere not close to you, I can ship one of these kits right to their door as well. All right, that first layer is done. So I'm gonna flip this back this way. I might need to just put a little bit more out here. And we will go in and add this second layer. And again, you'll notice that yellow is very um, transparent of a color. And even with this, with this yellow here as well, you're gonna be able to see through and see that wood grain underneath. But in my opinion, that just adds to the painting itself. All right, I did use up all of that yellow, thank goodness. I'm just gonna get a little bit more here. And I didn't really wait very long for this layer to dry. You could have waited a little bit longer. But for the sake of this video, I'll blame it on you guys. I didn't wait very long. All right, and there you have it. That uh, painting is pretty well finished. I'm wiping off my brush now and cleaning it off because if you end up leaving some paint on your brush and it hardens, then it is very difficult to get it off. I have been able to get things off with um, Dawn dish soap though. And we'll dry that off. Make sure your caps on your canisters are tightly closed. And if you would like to, if you went over the lines in any spots, um, like I did here, I'll show you what I can do sometimes. I'll just take a pen, a fine tip pen that is black. And if you just run it in the lines, it'll scrape away 
that excess paint that got in there. And then if it's black, it can also fill in a little bit of black ink in those spots as well. Just be careful to stay in the lines if you're planning to do something like that. And if you want to, you can leave the edges um, blank like that, have a nice wood look. Um, or you could take one of the colors that you have a lot of excess of and paint around and it'll give a nice frame framed in look with one of the colors that is in the painting to match it um, and make sure on the back that you sign it um, this one doesn't have it let me find one that does oh that one doesn't either um, but I will probably have burned into the back um, the, the title of this painting um, for you so that is there All right, so thank you for following along with this. Again, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in another paint by numbers kit, go onto my website and check them out there or check out the other videos that you can see here on my channel. We will see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist.